Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Salam sejahtera Salam. bagi kita semua. Shalom. Om swastiastu. Halo. Namo buddhaya. Salam kebajikan. Good afternoon, dear speakers and participants of the second international webinar with the theme COVID-19 HR won't get back to normal because normal was the problem. My name is Hogelin Devi and I will be the host for this webinar. How are you? I hope everyone is doing great, staying safe and healthy. Yeah, glad that we can meet one another in this chance through this second webinar. Ada yang sudah pernah ikut di serial webinar kami mungkin sebelumnya. Senang bertemu dengan Anda sekalian. It is nice to see you all again. Tidak apa-apa ya kalau ketemunya secara virtual dulu seperti ini. Demi, Demi. Demi pemutusan rantai nih ya. Nah, before we start our webinar today, we have an honorable special guest with us today. A lecturer in Faculty of Psychology, Universitas Erlangga. And also a lecturer in Human Resource Development Study Program, Postgraduate School Universitas Erlangga, seorang dosen di Fakultas Psikologi Universitas, Universitas Erlangga, dan seorang dosen di Magister Pengembangan Sumber Daya Manusia Sekolah Universitas Erlangga. I'd like to invite Professor Dr. Suryanto, MSI Psikolog, to give us Prof. Suryanto. Halo, selamat siang. apa bisa untuk dibuka caranya ya ya sudah dibuka ini Pak silakan Oke, selamat siang semuanya. Acara ini bertajuk adalah uh, Human Resource 24 Strip 7, 24 hari, 7, minggu, 7 hari dalam satu minggu, 7 minggu. Beracara bulanan yang seringkali membahas tentang dunia Human Resource saat ini. Human Resource, ya, HR, Well, uh, 24 and 7 diadakan oleh S2 PSDM, yaitu Sekolah Pasca Sarjana Universitas Erlangga bersama Himasipa atau Himpunan Mahasiswa Sekolah Pasca Sarjana dengan menggandeng beberapa narasumber dari Indonesia maupun luar negeri dari beragam disiplin ilmu. Karena itu inti dari program studi PSDM adalah menggabung muscle knowledge yang memperkaya keilmuan bidang pengembangan sumber daya manusia. Harapan saya, acara ini relevan dengan kondisi yang saat ini, terutama terkait dengan pengembangan sumber daya manusia di Indonesia dan perkembangan sumber daya manusia secara global. Materi pembahasannya mudah dipahami oleh masyarakat umum, sehingga harapannya juga akan memperluas jangkauan dari berbagai negara. Mohon dukungan para uh, dari para praktisi human resource, akademisi, dosen, dan mahasiswa dari berbagai jurusan agar HR 24 7 ini bisa terus diadakan dengan baik dan lebih baik dari saat ke saat. Mengingat partisipannya terdiri dari uh, peserta dari Sabang sampai Merauke, ada yang dari Sambia? James, where do you come from, please? James. <laughs> Ada yang dari Tanzania, Malaysia, New Zealand, India, Bhutan, Mongolia, Nigeria, Gambia, Sili, India, Pakistan, Ecuador, Ekstraktor, and Ekstraktor. Gitu. Harapannya bahwa acara ini bisa menjadi forum sharing informasi, khususnya terkait dengan human resource dari berbagai negara. Ya. I want to speak in English. <laughs> Yes, okay. please. Good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon. Yeah. This event is Air 24 Strip 7. It's a monthly event that discusses about current human resource. The human resource 24, uh, 24 and 7 is 
Gas by Postgraduate School Erlangga University Study Program of PSDM along with Gimasepa. That is a Postgraduate School Student Association. I collaborating various speakers from Indonesia and abroad from various disciplines. Because the core of the PSDM study program is combined muscular knowledge to enrich the scientific development of human resource. I hope this event is relevant to the condition of human resource development in Indonesia, especially and uh, generally in global. The subject matter is especially understood by the general public so that the burden, the range of scientific human resource. We ask for from human resource participants, lecturers and students from various majors so that this event will run well and can be held continuously. Bearing in mind that the participants of this event of, are from Sabang to Merauke, from Zambia, Tanzania, Malaysia, New Zealand, India, Bhutan, Mongolia, Nigeria, Gambia, Chile, India, Pakistan, Ecuador, etc. So I hope it's air 24 and 7 can be a forum from sharing human resource experiences, especially from various countries. I hereby, I hereby open the international human resource webinar today. Thank you for all speakers, participants, and all stakeholders who have made the event go on. Thank you very much. Good afternoon. Yeah. Thank, thank, you. You. thank you very much, Prof. You are welcome. Thank you. Good afternoon. Yeah, thank you, Professor Suryanto. It is nice to have you here with us all. Thank you for a nice welcome speech. Yes. And okay. on behalf of the committee, I would like to express my utmost gratitude yes. to uh, Director Skola Pasca Sarjana Universitas Erlangga, the Director of Postgraduate School Universitas Erlangga, Professor Dr. Hajia Sri Iswati S.A. M.Si A.K., Wakil Director Satu, the first Vice Director, Professor Dr. Anwar Ma'ruf, D.R.H.H. M.K.S., Lalu Wakil Direktur 2, the, vice, the Second Vice Director, Dr. Dina Sunyawati SHM Hun. Lalu Kepala Program Studi PSDM, the Head of Human Resource Development, Dr. Windiarto SA MBA, Profesor Dr. Suryanto MSI Psikolog, Hima Sepa, Himpunan Mahasiswa Sekolah Pasca Sarjana, atau... Uh, Postgraduate School Student Association, and then rekan-rekan PSDM dalam tim HR 24/7, Metri Kaling, dan ketiga narasumber kita, our three speakers, Mrs. Mambo Muzia, BA in International Relations, PGE HRB, Mrs. Aleida Diaz, BA in Industry Psychology, MBA, and Mr. Francisco Canales, BA in Education. Today we will have a discussion about what is really happening to this world during the pandemic era, especially in human resources. Apa sih yang sebenarnya terjadi di dunia kita selama era pandemi ini, terutama dalam hal sumber daya manusia itu sendiri? For this webinar, we have three great speakers from Zambia, Ecuador, and Chile. They are here to share us their point of views and knowledge what the pandemic era brings around the world. Let me introduce you our speakers today. The first is from Zambia, Mrs. Mambo Uzea, PA in, the interna in International Relations, PGD HRP. She is an HR expert and works at Mulungushi University. Thank you for participating in this webinar. We are so glad to have you here. And then the second speaker is from Ecuador, Mrs. Aleida Diaz, PA in Industry Psychology, MBA. She got her bachelor degree in Pontificia Universidad Católica del Ecuador. She is also an HR expert, a master quality and productivity, and a, and a professional coach. 
And then the third speaker is from Chile, Mr. Franz from Chile, Mr. Francisco Canales, BA in Education, teacher of English, and he got his bachelor degree in Universidad Autónoma de Chile, teaching methodology in Cambridge, UK, and human resources planning in India. Thank you so much for the speakers. We are so glad to have you here. Thank you for participating in this webinar. We should appreciate these three speakers who are willing to share us their insights about what they are going to share in this webinar. Before we start the presentation session, I'd like to inform the participants that, that later after the webinar, you will be asked to fill in a Google form whose link will be posted in this, in this Zoom chat room around 30 minutes before the webinar ends. Also, please write down your name and email to the Zoom chat forum for the attendance list. Untuk peserta, kami ingin menginformasikan bahwa setelah webinar ini berakhir, Anda diminta untuk mengisi Google Form. Linknya nanti akan diberikan oleh panitia dalam Zoom uh, chat room. Kemudian uh, untuk mendapatkan e-sertifikat, link akan diposting 30 menit sebelum acara berakhir. Uh, oleh karena itu, untuk participants, untuk rajin-rajin mengecek chat forumnya ya, supaya tidak selewat ini nanti linknya untuk Google Form. Dan juga jangan lupa untuk mengisi nama, juga email di kolom chat bagi yang baru join. The, and also there will be a question and answer session with the speakers also. The participants can write down the questions and to whom the questions are asked via Zoom chat room. Nantinya juga akan ada sesi tanya jawab dengan pembicara. Peserta diminta untuk menuliskan pertanyaan dalam kolom chat. Jangan lupa disertakan juga untuk pertanya pertanyaannya untuk ditujukan kepada siapa. The committee will pick two best questions for each speaker. Panitia akan memilih dua jawab dua pertanyaan yang terbaik untuk diberikan kepada masing-masing pembicara. Oke, okay, so we got uh, our speakers already in here. Let's start the first session presented by Mrs. Aleida Diaz with the topic Change the Era and Evolution in Human Resources. Mrs. Aleida, are you there? Hello? Good Mrs. afternoon. Aleida? Okay, good, good afternoon, afternoon. Debbie. Okay. Debbie, Debbie yeah. it is, the presentation isn't mine, international yeah. relations. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah, no problem. It's not, okay, yeah, the <laughs> the title is wrong. Okay, sorry, Miss. Uh, you can start the presentation. Are you ready now? Okay. Yeah. Okay, great. Um, okay, Mrs. Aleida, time is yours. Uh, good afternoon. My name is Aleida Diaz. Uh, I come from Ecuador. Ecuador is located in America in South America. Uh, it is a small country. We have uh, 12 million of habitants and many natural resources, majestic landscapes, and excellent weather. Lamentably, bad administrators for politicians and affected by the corruption. I live in Quito. It is capital of my country. It's the second city most affected by coronavirus. Guayaquil is the city most big in the country and the most affected by pandemic. pandemic. It is possible because oh, great part of the population don't have formal place work. In many cases are informal sellers and they don't have basic service like a water and they live as a nine. Eight to ten employees are generated by private companies. In this time, 11,000 workers have lost their employees. Today, layoff have increased. The companies covered by the law have fired people, have reduced hours, have forced to take vacation. All this is understood by economic situation. However, the focus continues on the results, which is not bad. But 
is important thing that results are obtained with the commitment of the people and investing in their learning and promoting yeah, values. Yeah, 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 yeah. The corruption is terrible in this time. Every day complaints of case, for example, a purchase of supplies in the in delivery of food baskets for vulnerable population, and many resources in a few hands. In spite of another world is possible, with every one choice, for example, promoting a space like this. And with this introduction, I am talking about chain of era and evolution in human resources. We hear incessantly that we are experiencing a chain of era. However, how people are managed and things are done in companies and organizations change little. In my country, we have a great challenge of position the management of people as a key element in the strategy of a business and its results. Next, please. Chain of error, where uh, today companies, organizations, public institutions must begin to ask themselves about the keys that will determine it if they float and advance or on the contrary sink. For revolution, green revolution has to do with a or being responsible with the environment, with people and with what we are living as a legacy to society. Next. We need to reinvent the management of people. And this allows us to reinvent the management of people and tune in to invite us to creativity, exponential change, passion, and about all resilience, job skills that thanks to the crisis we are experiencing, we have the opportunity to put them on the table. Next. Inspire, inspire. Is this the role leader role the boss? This new time invite us to reinvent ourselves and above all to rethink the role of the boss as this person who inspires and with his example, motivate each member to awaken his potential and put him at the service of a purpose of a serving. Next. Additionally, we have in the digital age the opportunity to learn that with this learning, awaken qualities such as a creativity, passion, a commitment that are the keys to leading us to excellence. Next, please. The invitation is to manage people in organization taking into account 10 steps. One step, respect diversity. Manage individual identity, regardless of age, education, sex, role in the company. Achieve the commitment of team members to take on the project as their own. To identify the purpose. Identify why we exist we generate value for internal and external clients, make everyone row in the same direction and see the impact of each one. Three, empowering workers. It is necessary to stop seeing people as a resources and see them as a talent. Talent people and support them to acquire sovereign over the life project, promote a space, that allow their capacity to emerge. Four, create learning networks. 
space to work transparently, knowledge and experience. This space go beyond the more monitoring of a project or sales they serve us to talk and share expectation first of or post new challenge. Next. Leaders at service of people. Your motivation should be to inspire your team to the level development in full potential. Seven, create feedback spaces. Share an opinion in a constructive, respectful, and sincere way that helps those who receive in to improve and contribute to teamwork. Eight, substitute control for trust. Everyone should be able to decide where they will work from according to their daily task. This combines efficiency and employee experience and results, fundamental in teleworking. Nine, commitment. The result of a strategy in which all the workers know the plans and objectives of the company so that they feel they are protagonists and participant in them. Only when we feel part can we row in the same direction. And finally, change happiness in the organization when people are, the, are easy, they complain less and get all their passion when the gap between what I dream and what I do is small, I feel happiness, coherence in what I do. I feel that I contribute and this element awaits all our genius. The list can be much longer. However, I am interested in presenting these steps in this exhibition as an opportunity to implement them in organization companies are nothing other than the people who work them. It's very important culture and strategy also. And quoting Peter Drucker, culture is the best strategy. Organization are the people who work in it. That is why it is re requires leaderships that inspire and motivate the members to let their lives to be happy and learning new skills. Next, please. Oh. Next, please. The intention is to promote agile, flexible companies, commitment to the develop of people, so that they have more power and theory be achieved the intent results. Work can no longer be synonymous with a place isolated from your person purpose. I hope and can become a the space to contribute, and this contribution can be measured with internalized ties to be able to passion and find a purpose of service with what we do. Next. Finally, the invitation is that where you are, you can flourish. Flourish. That's all. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Mrs. Ali Diaz, for a nice sharing knowledge and a point of view from you. We all know that this pandemic era really brings some changes to the evolution and human resources, as Mrs. Alida has shared to us. Okay, and the evolution is in the digital age as the opportunity to learn using creativity, passion, and commitment. Also, that the role leader should inspire others is really important. Yeah, minta tolong untuk para peserta supaya di mute gitu ya, supaya suaranya tidak masuk ke dalam webinarnya. For all participants, please mute your voice so the voice do not distract the others as well. Thank you. Okay, and then, uh, yeah, thank you, Mrs. Alida, for sharing us your insight. Uh, again, I'd like to remind you, all participants, please write down your name and also your email to the chat column for the attendance list. 
And then don't forget, you can write down your questions too to the speakers. And then later, the committee will pick two best questions to be asked to the speakers. Thank you. And then the next, we have uh, our speaker from Chile, Mr. Francisco Canales, with the topic COVID-19, one of the doors to clean our world and to stop global warming. Mr. Francisco, are you ready? Hello, Mr. Francisco. Hello, you hear me? Okay, yeah, I can hear you. Okay, are you ready? Yeah, I am ready. Okay, so Mr. Francisco, time is yours. Okay, thank you. I don't know if if I have to say good morning or good afternoon since <laughs> here is three, it's going to be 4 a.m. And oh. first of all, uh, I want to ask people to mute their microphones because they're killing my ears. Yeah, that's what I mean. <laughs> okay. Ready? Yeah. Okay. So, good morning or good afternoon, people. Uh, allow me to introduce myself. Uh, I'm Francisco. I'm from South America, Chile. And I'm here to give my opinion about COVID-19. Because I think this is one of the doors to clean our world and to stop global warming. And let's get started. So can you move on, please? So I think everybody knows what global warming is and we're going to define what it is. So global warming is the rise in temperature or of Earth's surface oceans and atmosphere. Average temperatures today are about one Celsius degrees uh, higher than before the Industrial Revolution. And um, I have a really good question for you guys. And uh, I want to know if you know what are the consequences of the global warming in the world. And we're going to define what it is. Please, next slide. So that's the question, and we're going to focus on what they are. Let's move on, please. So as you can see here, we got like the main, like the main consequence of global warming with hotter temperatures, more intense storm, spread of diseases, strong heat waves, melting glaciers, stronger hurricanes, change of ecosystems, animal extinction, rise in sea level, and more expensive food. So. Um, I think you wonder why I highlighted the spread of diseases. So now we're gonna focus on that because we're talking about coronavirus, right? Then please, let's move on. So how can we define a spread of diseases? So pandemics have flourished more rapidly. Pandemic can reach the farthest corner of the earth and hot temperatures make it easier for the viruses to survive and now we're gonna face our famous worldwide enemy, which is coronavirus. What it is, as you can see, coronaviruses are a large family of viruses that cause respiratory infection that can range from the common cold to more serious diseases. And we're facing this problem worldwide, and I think we gotta take care of it. Let's move on, please. Here we got the coronavirus pandemic. And what is the problem here? That people, I got my statement about coronavirus. Uh, it's one of the doors to stop the global warming. And I say that because people will never stop using plastic bottles, driving cars, buying packed stuff, such as uh, chips, cookies, or uh, everything that you get in the supermarket and the factories will never stop contaminating the earth. As you know, India, China, USA, Russia, Japan, they're always contaminating the earth and we, somebody has to stop that. But how can we do that? We've been promoting that on TV, on the radio, everywhere, but nobody does anything 
to stop global warming and it's killing our world. As you can see, uh, we got CO2 emissions in China. Stop that slice, please, Debbie. Yeah. Can we go back, please? Yeah, the previous one, please. Yeah, let's go back. Yeah, yeah. stop there, please. And uh, we have a really nice girl. She's from Switzerland. She's great at Thumbburn and everybody was promoting her idea of taking care of the planet and many people were making fun of her because of what she's doing in the world. But she's a really good environmental activist that is trying to help our world. She was trying to let us know that we have to take care of our planet because if nobody nobody's taking care of our planet and you gotta know that and we gotta think about our nature, our environment, about our life. And uh, you hear me? Mm -hmm. Yeah? Yep. Okay, can we continue to this ne next slide, please? And stop there. As I was telling you, we got here the CO2 emissions in China. Uh, you have pictures from January 1st from last year, you have January, February, and March. And now, above that, you have what is going on now during the coronavirus time. So the, there you have a big difference of the year, right? Take a look at the picture and read that picture. You're going to see it. it's a huge difference, right? So the first picture was taken in January 1st, 2019. And below we have January 1st this year. So there's no pollution because coronavirus stopped the factories, stopped the people, stopped the car, stopped emissions. Next slide, please. So here we got really important information taken from United States, Italy, Spain, China. As you can see, less domestic, 40% of less domestic air traffic. New York, 50% of decrease in carbon monoxide. Seattle, 41% decrease in peak traffic congestion. Decrease in nitrogen dioxide. 75% Madrid, Spain, 10%. Northern Italy, and we have in Europe 67 million fewer air passengers, which is huge change because every day we have pollution in the air, on the streets, on our houses, everywhere. Can we go, please? There you go. So now I'm going to show you a certain phenomena that are happening now in some countries. As you can see, we got Japan, where a Sika deer wandered the street and subway station of Nara. In India, a stock rag around the state capital of Dehradun. In my country, Chile, a puma show up in the center of Santiago. So how is it possible? It is possible because people are not interfering in the law of nature. So that's why I think COVID is one of the doors to stop global warming and stop the pollution of our world. Okay. Hello? Yep. Yeah. So it's done already. Okay. Yeah, have you done, Mr. Francisco? Yeah. Okay, yeah. So thank you, Mr. Francisco, for such a fresh new insight. We know that this pandemic era not only brings um, some negative um, impacts to the world economy, maybe, but it also brings some consequences to the world in a positive way, as Mr. Francisco has explained, that it is one, one way 
uh, one of the ways to stop the global warming. It is interesting about the fact that the air becomes clearer as the use of trans transportation also decrease, and then the decreasing of carbon monoxide and peak traffic congestion, nitrogen dioxide, and carbon emissions in some areas or regions or countries. Uh, menarik ya, bahwa ternyata uh, COVID-19 ini tidak hanya membawa dampak dalam global health issues, tidak hanya dalam dunia kesehatan atau dunia ekonomi, perekonomian dunia, gitu ya, atau perdagangan, tapi juga membawa dampak dalam hal positif untuk ke tingkat kebersihan nih dari udaranya menjadi lebih bersih gitu ya terlihat dari uh, slide nya tadi yang sudah ditunjukkan bahwa adanya pengurangan penggunaan transportasi udara juga uh, pengurangan dari segi karbon monoksida dan juga nitrogen apalagi juga carbon emissions di beberapa tempat, di beberapa wilayah, atau beberapa negara. Thank you, Mr. Francisco. And then I'd like to remind again for the participants, please mute the voice, okay? And then uh, you can write down your name and email for the attendance list. Bisa menuliskan nama dan email lewat kolom chat untuk daftar kehadiran. Juga jangan lupa Anda bisa memberikan pertanyaan kepada speaker. You can ask uh, questions to the speakers as well. Uh, via Google, uh, via chat room, via this chat room, bisa menuliskan pertanyaannya ke dalam kolom chat dan jangan lupa dituliskan pertanyaannya untuk siapa, untuk speaker yang mana nih gitu, jangan ke saya ya. Oke, okay. nah lalu uh, kita melanjutkan ke presentasi yang selanjutnya, the next presentation. Let's start this presentation presented by Mrs. Mambo Muzia with the topic International Relations and its Impact on HR after COVID-19. Hello, Mrs. Mambo. Hello. Um, okay, there is some trouble. Hello, Mrs. Mambo. Yeah, are you there? I cannot hear your voice. Uh, Mrs. Mambo? Okay. Um, hello, Mrs. Mambo? Mrs. Mambo, um, maybe there is some trouble with the voice. Hello? Okay. Um, while waiting for Mrs. Mambo, Yeah, we're gonna uh, give some questions first. Nee. We have some questions here from some participants. Okay, we have some questions here from the participants. Uh, okay, the questions for Mr. Francisco. Mr. Francisco, there are some questions. Uh, there are some questions for you. Okay. Okay, so this is from Ap Afan. Good afternoon. My name is Puji Afan. I'm a student from Stikas Hafsawati University. I want to ask Mr. Francisco how to deal with the impact caused by the by COVID-19 virus outbreak that occurred in various developed countries. How to deal with the impact of COVID? Yeah. How to deal with the impact caused by the COVID-19 virus? in various developed countries? Yeah, I, I think I have two answers for that. First, uh, how to deal in what way? Like, if we're thinking about how to take care of ourselves or how to deal with the effect of it. Mm, you can just uh, answer both of the, both from okay, the aspects. 
So nowadays we don't have a cure for it. We don't have a vaccine for it. We just have to take care of ourselves. And if we want to think about uh, how to deal with the impact, I think the governments have to create the way because we're not gonna survive. I mean, economically, we're not, we're not gonna survive with the impact of COVID-19 because everything is locked down, everything is closed, uh, business are down, going down and uh, countries are closed. And um, yeah, government, they have the key mm -hmm. to deal with it and they have to guide us to see uh, the day after. Okay. Yeah, so the key is in the government itself, right? Yeah, I th yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Jadi, untuk kuncinya sendiri itu sebenarnya terletak pada government-nya, pemerintahnya ini. Kalau misalnya rakyatnya mau dibawa ke mana, nah itu dari pemerintahnya yang mengarahkan, begitu ya. Kalau dilihat untuk cara menanggulanginya nih gimana nih how to deal with the impact caused by the COVID-19 lalu next um, yeah another question for Mrs. Aleda and Mr. Francisco both of you uh, this is from Lamin Samate hello Mrs. Aleda can you hear me yeah Mrs. Okay, yeah, this is a question for both of you, Mr. Mr. Francisco and Mrs. Aleda. My question is, how would we cope with the situation in order to deal with this pandemic? We cope with the situation, to adapt with the situation in order to deal with this pandemic. Um, I, I think that is um, the pandemic we we ask the opportunity to to see um, the opportunities to new ways to business and um, organ administrated and organization thinking in people mm -hmm. okay and then oh yeah for mr francisco this is the question is like uh, how to adapt for us with the current new normal like this how to what do you what do you think of the ways that we should adapt with this uh with this new situation new normal new uh, a new kind of normal what do you think that we just gotta deal with it it's the new generation of the world Mm -hmm. So I think uh, years ago we were afraid of bombs. Now we're afraid of virus. So we have to face that and stop that. Okay, great. So uh, as you can see, years ago, people were afraid of bombs. They were scared of guns. And now we have, because of the globalization, you know, like yeah. we are, every country is connected and that's a problem. Diseases are everywhere and they're going to be from people to people, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So thank you, Mr. Francisco. Okay. So uh, we still have one more presentation. Mrs. Mambo, are you there? Can you hear me? Mrs. Mambo. Hello. Her mic. She muted the mic. Terry had to chat here. She muted the mic. Oh, yeah. Hello. 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 Good morning. Yeah, I can, hear, I can hear you. Good morning. I can hear you now. Okay, thank you. Okay, great. So, Mrs. Mambo Muzia, this is your, uh, your turn. Uh, the presentation with the topic international relations and its impact on HR after COVID-19. Mrs. Mambo, time is yours. Thank you. Thank you very much, Debbie. Thank yeah. you, everyone. Our topic today, we are looking at um, the impact of inter the international relations is going to have after this COVID-19. International relations basically is about um, 
cooperation among nations. It is about conflicts of states. It is about bringing together international organizations to work throughout the world as one. I know that, I know that um, most international relations, uh, the anarchists believe totally that uh, to have international relations work, countries and international, hello? Hello. Yeah, for the participants, please mute the voice for the participants. Please mute the participants so it won't distract the speakers. Thank you. Yeah, Mrs. Member, you can continue. Yes, I was saying that um, anarchists believe in international relations such as uh, uh, the Hobbes and uh, the Morton House. They do believe that. Uh, International relations is about power. How much power a country has determines that they are sovereign from all other countries. But I want to, to say that um, the coming in of the coronavirus has proved to the, glo to the world that actually the world needs global interdependence. We need to work together. We need to cooperate so that we defeat this COVID-19. International relations should not generally be about power and how much a country has, because the foreign tools of every country believe that they must have diplomacy, they must have military power, they must have, they must be so foreign aid for them to help other people. But I think the COVID-19 has come at the right time where countries will realize the importance of cooperation, the importance of interdependence among nations. So we, we will see that it is more important to have more soft power on foreign policy than forcing matters on military interventions and stuff like that. Next slide, please. So we are talking about um, we are talking yeah. about Indonesia. Hello. Yeah. Hello. Indo yeah. Indonesia as part of the global world. I, you know that um, Indonesia has a very high population and it is part of the global world. So we are trying to say that when we look at foreign policy, um, Indonesia believes in a free and active policy and that the regional affairs and consumerate and the size and location of Indonesia are going to are going to make sure that we are able to involve ourselves. Indonesia is not going to involve itself in conflicts and in any other issues, but it is going to be part of this global world that is going to to be part of the people that will fight against COVID-19. They are ready to cooperate. They are ready to have interdependence with other nations. Indonesia has been part of the global world as it has gone in through democracy. And this therefore means that they are committed to having relations with other nations. They are also re, um, part of the giant, they are also part of other relations such as China, India, South Korea, and Japan. So being the fourth largest population, the world HRIM in Indonesia has begun to shape the future of Indonesia. On this one, I was just wanting to relate how Indonesia relates with other countries, which is very good. So what are some of the effects of international relations after the COVID-19? Uh, I have looked at five very important issues. International relations is about globalization. International relations is about the world economy, the international trade, international migration, and regional integration. Next slide. So when we look at globalization, globalization involves the economy. It involves the movement of people, the movement of goods, and the movement of ideas. So this 
somehow is going to become a challenge during this COVID-19 period, even after the new normal. Because we are looking at an issue where our ideologies will somehow be affected. We are looking at work of realizing our work balance from globalization to nationalization. What do I mean when I say that? What I mean is that most of the countries, because of this COVID-19, are going to live in isolation. With time, it therefore means that most countries will not look at a different country for fear of bringing into the country or out of the country the, 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 or spreading the disease. So therefore, most nations are going to concentrate on themselves and therefore end up nationalizing industries, nationalizing their factories, which is going to have an impact, especially on the issues of employment. The pandemic has therefore actually threatened globalization. It has threatened globalization legally, socially, politically, and therefore economically. Though in the long run, we hope that there's going to be improved cooperation among nations and international organizations. We also are not saying that globalization is going to end completely, but I see that globalization would still come up very well for as long as it is going to be able to enhance technology, then, go, then globalization is going to continue, especially for countries such as the developing nations, especially for us here in Africa. It therefore means that we, are, we have been lagging behind technologically. We hope that this pandemic is going to bring up new ideas and a concentration of improved technology amongst our countries. I also want to talk about the world economy. The pandemic has caused the largest global recession in world history. It has disturbed the political, social, economic, religious, and financial structures in the world. The world top economies such as the USA, China, Italy, Japan, and many others are on the verge of collapse. Why, why are we reaching those stages? We have issues of the lockdown, we have issues of the quarantine, we have issues of social distancing that have contributed highly to the economic gaps and economic collapse. We have seen over the last few months the significant drop in trade flows, advanced economies and a sharper fall in developing nations. Stock markets around the world have pounded and the oil prices which are the drive to most economies, have fallen, creating unemployment. Therefore, what are we saying? We are saying that the, the new normal has an imp the COVID-19 brought an impact to the world economy. Therefore, what are we as Etara people going to do about the economy that has fallen? Okay, we have seen the stock market and the world that have pounded the oil process. And unemployment has, has been created in, in that regard. Therefore, we, we, in my own opinion, I would wish to state that um, the world economies must come together. Again, we are talking about cooperation and interdependence. They must come together to see how they are going to help um, the countries, they see how they are going to, do, to help, especially the developing nations, to get back on their feet. We need, we need issues, we need organizations, international organizations such as the IMF, the World Bank, to come through, especially for countries that have very huge debts. Hello? Yeah, I'm sorry, Miss, yeah. Miss Mambo. Uh, okay. Tolong di mute partisipan peserta, tolong di mute dulu ya suaranya supaya tidak mengganggu speakernya dalam berbicara. Kasihan ini teman-temannya ya. Oke, okay. ya, yeah. Mrs. Mambo, you can continue. Sorry. Thank you, thank you, Debbie. That's okay. Yeah. So I was stating that we need to see an interdependence among. I'm sorry, uh, Mrs. Mambo is on. Yes, we okay. need more cooperation among us 
We need interdependence, but most of all, from the IMF, from the World Bank, we need to see a situation where the, 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 nation, the, the, the World Bank and the IMF are able to sit down and look at especially developing nations where we have huge debts. How do they hope to, to help us, to help these nations? so that they can be able to get back to their feet as they are being able to repay these huge loans that most of these uh, countries have. This will have an impact on employment again. Already we are seeing a situation where there's a lot of youth, very high unemployment levels, especially for the youth. I know probably even in Indonesia you are going through such, but how does the IMF hope to help us? Because it means unemployment is going to continue and it is going to even go to higher rates. What is the International Labour Organization doing about it? The International Labour Organization, I, I wish I could say that they should help as these developing nations especially are trying to lobby for the heavy loans that they have. Let them come in so that they, we try and obtain the, the, the jobs that we have and so that they try as much as possible to help curb this unemployment issue. So we are looking at the stock markets around the world which have also fallen, but we are hopeful that as we depend on each other, we are going to move forward during these times. Next slide. We are looking at international trade as well. Despite being in a global health crisis, trade is essential to save lives and livelihoods. Therefore, international cooperation is needed for trade to continue flowing. Governments, therefore, and international organizations must boost confidence in trade and global markets by improving transparency, by improving transparency about trade-related policy actions and their intentions. They must keep chains flowing, especially for health essentials and for the food. We should avoid unnecessary export restrictions and trade barriers. Help governments by supporting them deliver public interest to informed policy choices. The World Trade Organization, however, is key to this. And you know, they have been going through a lot of challenges such as the global crisis, which they never recovered. And now we have this health crisis that we still do not have a cure of, and we are not yet sure how we are going to go into this new normal. We therefore ask that uh, the World Trade Organizations can look at a few of these issues and, and see the way forward. We need some import substitution on most of our economies that may have come to play to reduce on over-dependency on national supplies. Especially if you look at most of the developing nations, Africa, we are over-dependent on, on, on other countries. So if the World Trade Organizations and our own organizations uh, in our various areas can look at which way we need to go so that we are able to keep trade flowing because we still need most of these people to be employed and we need, we need to survive. I also looked at the part of international migration. Most governments are striving to reduce the spread of COVID-19. Hello? Yeah, okay. Most governments are striving to reduce the spread of COVID-19 virus and have put up measures on mobility and migration. Travel restrictions by prohibiting entries from other countries and closed borders. I know most, uh, I have read that most um, Indonesians 
would usually migrate to places such as Saudi Arabia. They will migrate to Kuwait. I know most of um, our students there, once they complete, some have uh, feel they want to go out. But with this COVID-19, there are, there are a lot of implications that are going to come through. So most governments must strive to, 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 to actually reduce on the spread of this so that people may continue to, to be mobile and may continue to migrate because there are skills out there that other countries will still need. To, they, they cannot thrive without some of these skills that other people have. So labor migration has been temporarily upended with migration processing and remittance, contagion, possi possible loss of employment uh, due to age, due to health insurances. These will affect most migrants that have moved to other countries. And for certain nations, this same COVID-19 would or could bring about issues of stigmatization, could bring up issues of exclusion, some countries may, con may, go may get to a point where they are going to begin to protect some of their industries so that um, they do not over depend on other countries for fear of bringing in the diseases. In, in most African states, we have seen um, issues of xenophobia attacks. We have issues of lack of transport options and fear of, of, and fear of just retransmission of this disease. So we are talking about also the issues of international migration. They might threaten, or other migrants, they might threaten and affect the food security. Okay? We have the remittance of major income and foreign exchange in the developing nations. Therefore, we hope that uh, the shortage of labor and mobility of skill is going to continue with or without the COVID-19 between, because we still need some special skills that would come from other people, from other uh, expatriate nations. Uh, finally, on the issues of um, <coughs> regional integration, countries before and after, even during this new normal, will need to cooperate, they will need to depend on each other. How can this be easily done? This can easily be achieved through regional integration. Most countries have reacted during this COVID-19 to go it alone. Efforts of regional organizations to offer advice on coordination and cooperation is required to recover from this crisis. As a result, some borders have been closed, supply chains have been disrupt disrupted, and regional economic activity has fallen. Working across borders to share the best practice for mitigating the spread, coordinate physical measures, and boost trade must be encouraged. Regional integration, therefore, must bring up a crisis. The crisis that we have at the moment should be looked at as an opportunity to have more coordinated integration, stronger coordinated physical measures, and could help absorb economic, growing economic costs, trans-regional collaboration, and reinforce global multilateral action. We have a lot of international organizations such as the World Health Organization, the International Labor Organization, and some of those few examples that we have put there. So for, 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 for international re relations to thrive, the World Health Organization must incorporate each and, each, each and every country so that we are able to fight this crisis together. We have seen some other countries forgoing it on their own, trying to find, um, come up with the probably vaccines or whatever medicinal, uh, medicinal effects that they could find to help fight this COVID-19. I think this should stem up to the World Health Organization to bring up everyone on board so that we fight this COVID-19, because it is not just in one particular country, but this affects everyone. So, HR and international relations 
at some point we need to come up together so that we are able to achieve what we need to achieve. So uh, HRA has tremendously changed from the time the COVID-19 pandemic came into play into the new normal and the HRA professionals are having to improve and keep organizations running despite Sorry. Okay. Hello? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So we are talking about international relations has has tremendously changed from the time the COVID-19 pandemic came into play with the new normal. And HR professionals are having to improve, to improvise and keep organizations running despite the lockdowns, the quarantine and social distancing. Most employees have been affected physically, mentally, financially across the world and has come through for them. Most industries have been negatively affected by this COVID-19 and other industry sectors have been affected positively. Some of the organizations have intentionalized their operations and therefore international movement of labor has been with the expansion of international businesses and therefore HR management has also gone across the borders. We have multinational companies that need to be taken care of because most of them are across borders. The HRA experts must provide direction, therefore, confidence and resilience, just like politicians in times of international conflict, from engagement in difficult times up to, the, up to retention in the long term. We therefore, it would be good for international relations and human resources, they have certain things in common. Therefore, they must all learn to be flexible, create guidelines together, the governments in place and the international organizations and the HRA experts must therefore be flexible, create guidelines and support networks. They must keep workers, in human uh, relations uh, experts must keep workers safe by maintaining a healthy work environment. They must look for opportunities amid adversity. They must be able to fight, they must be there to fight crisis management. We know that there are a lot of challenges that are going to come with this, but uh, we'll look at the issues of communication where governments have to put in policies and guidelines that are supposed to follow, identifying and implementing effective employee policies and support which changes constantly and bring out anxiety, especially among our people. Technology has become the easiest way of communication right now, but a huge challenge, as I put it, especially among us, the developing nations, due to some of, some of the costs that come with technology, and sometimes it is just the will, especially among African nations. We need also to create trust. This has brought about major cultural changes to our lives and to most businesses. Therefore, needs daily and honest communication and improved teamwork among all stakeholders. Rapid, risk, rapid policy change. These are, these are changes that almost daily making it very difficult to plan for one's work. Therefore, fast communication of any policy guidelines must be communicated and take advantages of the webinars such as this one to get advice and to get other ideas on any disruptions experiences. So what are some of the, 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 what is the future of international relations? What we hope to see as nations and international organizations relate with each other. We hope to see a world that faces a common enemy so that the redefinition of the local interest should be reoriented in a vision that the interest of countries today cannot be achieved in isolation from the internet, from the interest of others. 
power, economic power, military, nuclear weapons, but global cooperation amongst all others are the real issues that affect each and every one of us in the global world. Poverty, diseases such as malaria, Ebola, HIV AIDS, high unemployment levels, safe water supply, climate change, especially in Africa and other developing world countries. Therefore, what were we, was I trying to say in conclusion? I was trying to say that the future of international relations is still bright for as long as nations realize that all the money that we, most of the money is that we spend on issues of war, issues of military power, issues of wanting to be or wishing to be the superpower. At the end of the day, COVID-19 has proved that all that is futile. All we need is to improve on healthy diplomacy where every nation comes together. We need to improve on cooperation and dependency of one another. I thank you. Okay, thank you, Mrs. Mambo. Now from Mrs. Mambo, we got a fresh new insight that the impact of COVID-19 itself has brought to the international relations is the globalization, the world economy, the international trade, the international migration, and also the regional integration. Bahwa COVID-19 sendiri ini juga membawa dampak Uh, pada globalisasi, kemudian dunia, well, ekonomi dunia, perekonomian dunia, perdagangan internasional, migrasi internasional, dan bahkan regio, regional integration. HR experts must provide direction, confidence, and resilience just like politicians in time of international conflict. One thing that I found interesting is, from Mrs. Mambo is that COVID-19 also has changed okay, the understanding Uh, minta tolong peserta untuk di mute ya uh, supaya tidak mengganggu. Terima kasih. Iya, tolong di mute ya. Terima kasih. Oke. Okay. Uh, one thing that I found interesting from Mrs. Mambo is that COVID-19 has changed the understanding of our ideologies from capitalism to neoliberalism and then from going to work to realizing the work-life balance. And then from globalization to nationalization, bahwa COVID-19 sendiri ini juga uh, sedikit merubah pandangan kita, pemahaman kita akan uh, ideologi kita yang sebelumnya kapitalis menjadi neoliberalism. Dan juga dari yang awalnya pergi bekerja, sekarang jadi tahu nih, jadi sadar nih, uh, kehidupan bekerja yang seimbang itu seperti apa. Dan dari globalization to nationalization. Thank you once again, Mrs. Mambo. And we have some thank questions. Thank you very much, David. Yeah, thank you, Mrs. Mambo. Now we have the questions here. Uh, the question is for Mrs. Mambo. Yeah, the question is for Mrs. Mambo. Uh, hello, my name is James, James Kalimanzila from Tanzania. I would like to ask Mrs. Mambo how international organizations such as you know, uh, and ILO have played the role on COVID-19 in Zambia. United Nations Organization and ILO. Okay. Thank yeah. you, James, for that question. Um, at, the, at the moment, in Zambia, We are not under complete lockdown. Indus most industries are still working as per normal. So we have not really seen a situation where um, the, the government and the International Labor Organization really has to come in because we are still working as per normal. The, the biggest challenge that we having at the moment as a country is that most of the foreign owned industries have been not allowing workers to go back to their homes 
but to keep them in, an, in their industries and are not looking after them well. We have situations where, where they, they, were, they are accommodated, they are not taken care of properly, their food is not being provided for, but these people expect, expect our workers to still manage to go for work in the morning. Sufficing to say that uh, most of our councils and the Ministry of Labor have gone to see, have received the complaints and they have managed to, to speak to these foreign, foreign, foreigners. But as a nation at the moment, we are seeing a situation where we are still not yet happy with what, how far our government have gone. We have issues, honestly, of um, corruption that we have to deal with in most of these developing nations. And therefore, we are seeing situations where our governments are not able to sit down with these foreign expatriates or the people that own these companies to speak to them honestly because they are afraid of most of these issues of, co of corruption. Yeah. Okay. So, James, that is the answer from Mrs. Mambu, right? Okay. And then um, the second question, Mrs. Mambu, this is for you. Another question. Um, my name is Rahma from Erlanga University, Universitas Erlanga. I would like to ask a question to Mrs. Mambu. What is your opinion about the increasing of labor turnover, especially in Indonesia, that most of them are from lower class? And besides, the government can't help them, cannot help them optimally. So what do you think is the best decision to make? Uh, what is the best decision to make everything balanced? between the employee, company, and yeah. the government. Do you get the Debbie, question? Yeah? May you kindly repeat your question? Okay, I will repeat again the question. Yes. Uh, the question is, what is your opinion about the increasing of labor turnover, especially in Indonesia, that most of them most of the employees are from lower class. Besides, the government cannot help them optimally. So what do you think is the best decision to make everything balanced between the employee, the company, and the government? Okay. I, I, I know that uh, uh, most of the the people that are employed in, in Indonesia are low skilled staff that I, that I have read and I have seen. But um, these are some of the challenges that we are talking about, about developing nations or nations that have been called developed but have not reached that level of development yet. So what I would advise some of these uh, uh, stuff is that I believe employee to employer communication is the key. Once there is communication, in Zambia, for instance, we have what we call trade unions. I'm sure you do have them there. We have a situation where we need to communicate between the employees, the trade unions, and the employer. But already, in a nation like ours, we have issues where there is a lot of corruption that is going on. You'll find that even between the, the trade union and the employer, there are already issues of corruption that are going on, disadvantaging, disadvantaging the employees. Therefore, I would suggest that the communication should be improved between the workers and the employees. Then I think for, for the governments, we need a situation where we are able to communicate with these governments. 
in a in a situation like ours here in Zambia, where I was talking about, especially expatriate companies, we need a situation where the governments are going to help their people stand up. The governments must be there to help the employees. But how are the governments going to do this? The governments can only win this by first having the will to help the employees, and secondly, improve on communication. Let them find ways of improving on communication between themselves and the people that, and the employees of their, of, and their citizens. Yeah. Okay, so that is the answer from Mrs. Mambo. That the, communi the communication from the government to the citizens are, is important. The, that yes. the government should find the, the how to communicate easily, uh, easily understood by the citizens, right? Yes. Ya, jadi kuncinya adalah dari pemerintah sendiri juga harus mencari cara untuk uh, berkomunikasi supaya komunikasinya ini sampai ke semua lapisan masyarakat jadi bisa diterima kuncinya dari komunikasi itu sendiri oke okay. and then um, we still have more time here I guess I can add some questions is that okay Mr. Francisco, Mrs. Mambu and Mrs. Alida yeah so I have some questions uh, I have some participants questions uh, the per, uh, The next question is for Mr. Francisco. Mr. Francisco, can you hear me? Yeah, Biden. Yeah, this is the question for you. Hi, my name is Eurika. I'm asking to Mr. Francisco Canales. From the presentation, I can conclude that somehow COVID-19 bring a good impact for our environment. Do you think this situation can last considering that there is a new normal plan? that regulated by the government, what do you think? I don't think it's something from the government. I just think that it's just that it's going to happen in the future. And yeah, in certain terms, it's helpful for our environment, but it's really bad for our health and for, for us as humanity, you know? Mm. So I think we can take advantage of it But yeah, the disadvantages are really bad for us. That's mm -hmm. what I think about. Yeah, okay. that's what yeah. I think about that. So we we'll, we should start from ourselves, right? Not from the government, but from ourselves, right? Yeah, we Anything have to like face that. that, and we gotta take care of ourselves. If you if mm -hmm. we want to survive, because here in my country we've been having a lot of uh, death every day, mm -hmm. and like. Mm -hmm. 200 people a day and I think that is too many people for for a pandemic. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, okay. Ya, jadi kuncinya adalah dari diri kita sendiri dulu, bukan dari pemerintah ya. Jadi yang bisa mengontrol itu sebenarnya dari diri kita. Nah, uh, untuk situasi kalau misalnya mau benar-benar uh, global warming ini stop atau untuk mencegah adanya oh, untuk mengundur, mengulur waktu supaya Uh, global warmingnya juga dapat terhenti itu dimulai dari diri kita sendiri bukan dari karena ada new normal tapi dari diri kita sendiri dulu jadi kayak pengurangan penggunaan plastik mungkin sekarang sudah banyak ya digunakan untuk pengurangan penggunaan plastik the use of plastic bags in some markets has already been reduced sudah dikurangi uh, diganti dengan kita harus membeli tas yang kain gitu ya atau sekarang sudah banyak ya digunakan dijual di toko-toko untuk mengurangi penggunaan plastik, the use of plastic bags, we use a, a, a permanent bags, a, like a real bag, gitu ya, kayak beneran tas-tas tas kain gitu ya, supaya a, bisa mengurangi jumlah peng, penggunaan plastik, seperti itu. And then, one more question here, ada lagi satu pertanyaan untuk a, Mrs. Mambo. Uh, ya, yeah. for Mrs. Mambo, are you there? Ya? Yeah. Can yes, you hear me? Yes, yeah, yes. Okay. I can hear you, Debbie. Thank you. Okay. So, I am Wendy Puspitasari from STIA Equitas Bandung, Indonesia. I would like to I would like to ask Mrs. Mambo, 
what do you suggest for Indonesian government to increase the economics while controlling the COVID-19 spread? Because Indonesian government wants to start the new normal life in order to increase the economic condition. Meanwhile, the COVID-19 curve is still rising. The indisciplined behavior of some Indonesian toward new normal life makes the situation worse. What do you think? What do you think that the government should do to increase the economic while controlling the COVID-19 spread? Thank you, Debbie. Yeah. COVID-19 COVID has, has brought in serious challenges to, to the world economy. And mm. there are certain countries whose economies have been doing well for some time. And if those economies are feeling the impact right now, then it means that um, it is worse for the developing nations like ours, for instance, in Africa. And it could be worse even for Indonesia. It could, it could be bad for Indonesia and worse for Africa. But in the new normal, for us to survive, because we need to save lives. In Zambia, for instance, the government has even failed to just give free food for those that cannot completely manage because the economy is that bad. Mm -hmm. Therefore, I would suggest that. Uh, in the new normal, we may just go ahead and open the economy. Because we are not sure how long this COVID-19 is going to take. It may be here with us forever, somehow. And therefore, lives need, need to be saved. We need to continue to survive. Mm -hmm. Therefore, I, I feel that the government must open up the economies, but Ourselves, the citizens of the nations, must be able to take care of ourselves, to take into consideration everything that we are told to do. Let us wash our hands, let us sanitize, let us keep social distancing. The industries as well that are going to be opened, let them continue to take these, um, the rules and the regulations and try as much as possible to follow them so that we may continue keeping our economies running. Yeah. I think sensitization so. might also not come to an end. The sensitization and um, continuous reminder to our people that they, they need to follow these rules. Sensitization should not be stopped by our, our relevant authorities. We need to open the economies because we need to survive. Hmm. Yeah, right. So uh, from Mrs. Mambo answered that uh, the, the economy should go on, uh, but the people should uh, should taking should take care of themselves, right? Uh, right. Uh, like sanitize your hands, wash your hands, and uh, do the oh, what is it? The, do the cleaning of your own body. Jadi uh, ekonomi bisa boleh tetap berjalan selama new normal karena kita butuh untuk hidup, butuh bertahan hidup, butuh survive. Tapi yang perlu diingat adalah protokol kesehatannya yaitu dengan mencuci tangan, untuk menggunakan hand sanitizer, masker. Sekarang sudah banyak ya di uh, dipromosikan atau diiklankan banyak iklan-iklan supaya uh, kita ini menerap untuk menghadapi new normal nanti ya dengan menyediakan berbagai alat yang uh, wajib untuk dibawa setiap hari ketika kita berada di luar rumah. Seperti masker, lalu uh, jaket lengan panjang, kemudian topi, helm untuk yang biasa mengendarai ojek online ya. Lalu untuk apalagi itu ya, sarung tangan plastik mungkin lalu juga ada hand sanitizer. Jangan lupa juga membawa sabun kalau misalnya suatu waktu kita harus juga cuci tangan karena cuci tangan juga penting ya di sini ya. Nah, okay. So, um, dear speakers and participants of the second international webinar, from this webinar we know that COVID-19 brings impacts on the international relation and the evolution of the human resources. Kita tahu bahwa dalam COVID-19 ini sendiri 
tidak hanya membawa dampak pada international relation atau evolution, evolution dalam human resources, tapi juga terhadap dunia, khususnya dalam aspek kebersihan lingkungan. Nah, COVID-19 has changed the understanding of our ideologies from capitalism to neoliberalism, from going to work to realizing work-life balance, and from globalization to nationalization. But During this pandemic era, the world has all has also some changes to the safety aspect and the environment. This pandemic era can be considered as one of the ways to stop the global warming and clean the environment. Pandemic era pandemi ini juga bisa dianggap sebagai salah satu cara kita untuk menjaga bumi dengan menjaga kebersihan lingkungan seperti yang tadi sudah disampaikan oleh Mr. Francisco that the decrease of carbon dioxide and then the decreasing of carbon emissions in some areas and some regions also bring the impact that the, the that the ozone becomes clearer the air is become clearer also okay and then i would like uh, to uh, on, uh, on behalf to the On behalf of the committee, I would like to express my gratitude. Ya, minta tolong peserta di mute dulu ya. Oke, okay, karena ini nanti ada informasi pentingnya supaya yang lainnya bisa mendengar nih. Ya. Tolong di mute peserta. Terima kasih. Ya. Uh, now we have come to the end of our session. Once again, on behalf of the committee, I would like to express my gratitude to Director Sekolah Pasca Sarjana Universitas Arlangga, the Director of Postgraduate School Universitas Arlangga, Professor Dr. Hajah Sri Iswati S.A. M.S.U. and then Wakil Director 1, the, vice, the first Vice Dr. Anwar Ma'ruf, DRH MKS, Wakil Direktur 2, The Second Vice Director, Dr. Dina Sunyawati SHM Hum, Kepala Program Studi PSDM, The Head of Human Resource Development Study Program, Dr. Windy Arto SAMBA, Profesor Dr. Suryanto MSI Psikolog, Dr. Maslica Mafrukati, sorry, Dr. Maslica Mafrukati, Lalu Hima Sepa, Himpunan Mahasiswa Sekolah Pasca Sarjana, student, uh, Postgraduate School Students Association, rekan-rekan PSDM dalam tim HR 247, Petri Kaling, dan our three speakers, Mrs. Mambo, Mrs. BA in International Relations, PGD HRP, Mrs. Alida Diaz, BA in Industry Psychology, MBA, NLS, BA in Education and all participants who supported and participated in this webinar for making this event a success. Thank you so much for all of, to all of you. And a kind reminder that for all participants, please fill in the Google form. The link is provided in the screen, in your screen. Uh, and then in order to get the e-certificate, so you must fill in the Google form first. Untuk peserta, silakan mengisi Google Form yang di, yang linknya ada di dalam layar Anda ini supaya mendapatkan sertifikat. Jadi kalau misalnya tidak mengisi Google Formnya tidak mendapat sertifikat ini ya. Nah, also we still have another webinar next month. The poster will be posted by the committees. Follow us on our Instagram at human.resources247 for more updates and information about our upcoming events. And then I would like to leave you with a quote from Richard Stallman who once said Sharing knowledge is the most fundamental act of friendship because it is a way you can give something without losing something. Let us, let us all be guided by all the things that we have learned and heard through this webinar and let us keep on sharing our knowledge to one another. Thank you so much, dear speakers, Mrs. Mambo, Mr. Francisco, and Mrs. Aleida. And thank you so much for all participants. I'm sorry if I made some mistakes or forgive me for my shortcomings. Mohon maaf apabila ada yang kurang berkenan atau ada salah kata. Till we meet again in the next webinar, stay safe and healthy. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. See you later and God bless you. Thank you. See you all. Bye-bye.